all right grace and peace to the body that is the church uh this video is kind of a spur of the moment decision i think i'll just open it up we can chat about the sabbath let me post the link in the comment section paste it's been a long day it's been a long week last week i am pretty tired but it's been a while since i've done a video so i figured why not let's talk about the sabbath anyone is welcome to come in and talk about the sabbath so long as you hold to the word of god as being the inerrant inspired word of god let me get to the video let me pin it in the uh, mess pin message yep there we go i don't really have anything planned i'm just gonna walk through what's going on brandon how are you hope you're doing good hope your family's doing well i pray you guys are being kept safe by the lord um, so <clears throat> i'm just gonna walk through my position on the sabbath and then if anybody joins we can just chit chat about the sabbath basically uh growing up sda i was taught that the sabbath was um well you're really taught that the, the decalogue is a an eternal law that before sin, the angels had the Decalogue in some way, shape, or form. There's different ways they explain that. And uh, what's going on, Brandon? How are you? I'm doing all right. How about you? Man, I am exhausted. It's been <laughs> a long day, we, and last week was busy too. So, Ethan, if you're not me, at least you're not the one with the case of the runs. <laughs> 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 that is never fun. No, it's not. <laughs> are you are you sick or is it just ate something? No, bad or... what happened was, and I didn't know you were not supposed to do this. I had a combination of baked beans with egg or potato salad, and I didn't know you're not supposed to do that. And as soon as I had electrolyte and ginseng tea, it only made it worse. Oh man, yeah. I, you know, it's weird because I always I love baked beans with potato salad. That goes really well together. Mm hmm. And I usually do a cottage cheese or something as well with it, but I, yeah, I don't think I've ever gotten the runs from it. Yeah, you can keep the cottage cheese stuff. I'm not gonna have stuff that's like bird poop in my mouth. <laughs> that's crazy. So yeah, I figure I'll just talk about the Sabbath. Um, oh goody! Because uh, I, I don't even know what your position is, so I don't know if you want to go through on your position or not. <clears throat> You're welcome to. Well, my position for Sabbath. A lot of people go like, you know, you know, it's not it's not that important to keep it or whatever. And this is what I trying to remember what show I did with Chris. I know I did on one of the shows, but um, people go like, well, the Sabbath day was done away with. It was never done away with to begin with. It never was. There's verses that literally prove that. You know, when they're showing one verse in the scripture, I'm not sure his position or not. I'm just saying what I know. Um, where he was like. Helping some dude like cut some wheat or whatever, and saying you should not be doing it on the Sabbath. Jesus was showing us an example what you're able to do on the Sabbath. He didn't say he couldn't help people. He didn't say, hey, you can't um, prepare food or whatever. He was showing us examples. This is why he said, "Behold, I have not come to destroy the law or the prophets, but to fulfill it." The way I interpret that is, you know, he's giving us an example how we're supposed to go by according to God's law. We had a pretty good idea in the Old Testament, but when Jesus came, he gave us a full-on idea how we're supposed to go about it. Gotcha. So Matthew 5, 17, that's definitely an interesting one. Um, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, 
not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So what I what I've always struggled with, like I said, coming from an SDA position um, that does teach Sabbath keeping, and uh, I, actually Ellen G. White does add uh, Sabbath laws and regulations to the Sabbath. But with that aside, <clears throat> notice he says the law and the prophets he came to fulfill and not to abolish. Right. So, so um, did he already fulfill the prophets? So we don't even have to need to focus on the law, but the prophets right there. Because if, if the answer is yes, and this is something I struggled with for a while, then how do we understand fulfill here? Because there's only one fulfill, and it's being used to refer to both law and prophets. Hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Personally, I don't know. Yeah. To be honest. But I know the law is not done away with because right. sorry, I'm eating a little bit of something. Sorry, I'm still hungry. No, you're good. Um, when he says, until heaven and earth pass away, not one dot or any of these things. Um, I forgot what I was saying now. Shoot. But basically what he's saying, in my opinion, is this stuff's not done away yet until heaven and earth pass away. And I think that's where we get the uh, the new heaven and new earth stuff. Like when he says, heaven and earth may pass away, but my words shall forever remain the same. Yeah. The only thing I don't get is, are we going to keep on observing the Sabbath in heaven? I'm like, huh. And I just keep going all these weird ideas like, okay, so once we're there, what's going to happen from there? Are we going to keep observing the Sabbath or what? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yes. Yes, that is something that... Uh... I was taught in Adventism is that they do believe that you will be, or those who are in heaven will be keeping Sabbath, a weekly Sabbath um, in heaven and in the eternal state. So they go to passages like Isaiah 66 to make that point. And I think that's actually the main verse they use. But real quick here, Luke 16, starting at verse 14, is, um, is a parallel to Matthew uh, 5, 17 through 20. And it reads, uh, the Pharisees who were lovers of money heard all these things and they ridiculed him. And he said to them, you are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were until John. Since then, the good news of the kingdom of God is preached, and everyone forces his way into it. But it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one dot of the law to become void. That kind of seems to add more information and details of what Matthew was talking about. Notice here this, the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, which I, I don't know how you understand it, but I, I take those both to refer to the same kingdom. I understand it both ways. You could say kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven. Either way, it's the same thing. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't really see a need to to make them separate kingdoms, and it seems kind of uh, forced onto the text when everything right, about right. Yeah. both kingdoms seem to be referring to the same thing, really. Mm -hmm. And so this good news or this gospel of the kingdom is what we're supposed to be giving. That's the gospel. It's the gospel of this kingdom. And Paul talks about, right, the, the, the gospel of the kingdom. The kingdom is um, not in, um, what does he say, eating and drinking, but in power and righteousness or something like that. I forget what it is. So this, when we go out, we give the gospel message to people, we are inviting them to come into the kingdom of heaven to receive salvation. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that is the, the focus here more so than the law and the prophets. Basically, Jesus, Jesus seems to be saying that I have come to fulfill the law and the prophets because they, 
like he says, uh, where is it? And it's one of the gospels. He says, if you would have believed Moses, you would have believed me for Moses speaks about me. I think that's what he's kind of saying here is that he came to fulfill the law and the prophets to bring the good news of the kingdom, which brings salvation to those who believe. So when you read in the Old Testament, especially when it talks about the law being given and following the law, if you followed the law and you were perfectly righteous by the standard of the law, you were you were basically creating your own righteousness and being able to, to in essence, save yourself. Of course, we know that no one was ever able to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm kind of just rambling on. You can interrupt me at any moment in time at all. Mm -hmm. It doesn't bug me. I'm sitting here learning because I'm still trying to learn myself. That's why I like when I come on either your show or Chris's because I never know well. <laughs> yeah, I'm always open to, to learn as well. And, uh, you know, if we we understand that none of us have all the, the answers and we're here to talk and, and learn about things then um, we keep our, our spirit i always pray before i do these shows i always pray lord keep a keep a fear of you in my heart keep my spirit low so i can gain your wisdom and your knowledge and your understanding and through doing that hopefully i come to his the truth <clears throat> That's why I need, I finally start doing that because I'm always, if you ever saw my videos, I'm a complete hothead because if you see the topic <laughs> talk about, like, it gets me mad. Like, you know, the truth is always right there in front of you. They ain't closer with a bitch on the dang nose. Like, it's right, right freaking there. How are you not seeing that? All you gotta do is open the Bible and it tells you everything. But no, they always want to skip past it. Like, why? Right. That's yeah, why it's. Crazy. You know, sometimes man's wisdom can confuse things, no doubt about that. We want to, you know, talking about like Calvinism, you want to systematize things. And that's always nice. And it makes things neat. But it's not a perfect system. There are no systems that are perfect. There's always mm -hmm. going to be issues in any type of system. But if we just hold on to what the scriptures say and if if you want to add more to it i mean that's great and i'll go ahead and do that if you want but um i would i would suggest being very careful if one is going to do that right at the very least let's let's affirm the plain truths of scripture and then from there let's let's dialogue about anything we want that, that goes beyond that or or not necessarily be I, mean, I guess beyond it but uh, there, there can be texts that kind of hint at certain things, and we kind of build upon that, and then build our own systems. Um, and we can talk about those kind of things, but at the end of the day, none of those are, are going to be salvific, in my personal opinion. Alrighty, no problem there. But I was just reading here in Deuteronomy chapter four. I was here in verse one. It says, "And now, O Israel, listen to the statutes." So the so the Decalogue is is being called the commandments are being called the statutes and the rules that that I am teaching you and do them that you may live and go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers has given you. So they were commanded to, to observe the laws within this covenant. And, and I do believe it is important to always point out that laws are always given in covenants. Sometimes there are different laws given in different covenants. And sometimes there are multiple covenants and each covenant will have similar laws, but then also different laws. Like Abraham was given a covenant and had certain laws in there, you know, so on and so forth. Deuteronomy 4 1 that actually plays in pretty good with uh, Jeremiah uh, 11 4. That just popped in my head just now. It plays in very well with Jeremiah 11 4. Nice. I'll start at verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Hear the words of, of this covenant and speak to the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. You shall say to them, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Cursed be the man who does not hear the words of this covenant that I commanded your fathers when I brought them out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace, saying, Listen to my voice and do all that I command you. So shall you, so shall you be my people. And I will be your God, that I may confirm the oath that I swore to your fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey as at the 
this day? Then I answered, so be it, Lord. Yeah, that, that fits in pretty well. You know, this, this talk of giving of law, and if you observe this law, you will be found righteous and you'll have life. And also notice what's always connected with, with this is the land. Deuteronomy mm -hmm. 4, this was a good connection that you made. The land is always promised as well, too. And that is a theme that is in the New Covenant. Uh, the book of Hebrews talks about it, calling the heavenly Zion, and that when we enter, the difference is we don't keep a law to gain this land flowing with milk and honey or to gain this life and this righteousness. There was one man who did perfectly observe the law so that we could obtain these things through by grace through faith and i think that's what these things these things are pointing to and that's what this covenant in my personal opinion this covenant was given with that main focus in mind correct me if i'm wrong add to it take away from it what, what are your thoughts um i think what you're saying fits in fairly well actually i'm listening i'm also reading at the same time too because like i said i'm learning and i I enjoy this stuff because I haven't been getting a lot of reading done. But I love this. Everything you're putting in there as well, it's fitting up pretty good in my opinion. Um, yeah, so it's been, you know, 10, I don't know, let's see, 10 years ago when I, uh, was it 10 years ago when I left Adventism? 10, 11, 12, somewhere, somewhere around there. And I really started to study topics on my own. Uh, reading the word and I'll study a certain topic, come to my conclusion and kind of move on. And that's what it was like with the Sabbath. I studied the Sabbath doctrine, <clears throat> came to my conclusions and moved on and kind of didn't really study much after that. And I'm always, you know, with something like the Sabbath, I'm always open to correction on it um, because I'm not infallibly perfect on, on my knowledge of scripture. Um, and it's been a while actually since I've even talked with other people or debated about the sabbath whether or not we should be keeping it and even if we do keep it in the new covenant you know there are those who and i don't think i would necessarily agree with those who say that the sabbath changed to whatever day you want i have a hard time if i was to keep sabbath it would be on the seventh day i have a hard time grasping that position although they do make some good arguments i think some good points from scripture um so yeah what are your thoughts on the the first day sabbath and all that uh for sunday is sunday a bunch sunday. of garbage for me and i'll explain why uh for pagans that was supposed to be a form of sun worship and with pagans um, they got their hands in almost everything, and that's pretty evident today. Um, and I show—I I forgot what show was on with Chris, but um, I was talking about like in Matthew twenty-eight. I was talking about uh, when they went to go to the tomb. Uh, they like to say sepulcher, but I like to use tomb because I want to be more biblically accurate here. Um, they saw the tomb was empty, and they had a chart. I was looking at it. They said that Jesus uh, rose from the dead around possibly like noon on a Saturday or whatever because it said three days and three nights. Yeah. And right there, it's not saying that the Sabbath was done away with. And they keep saying, oh, Jesus rose from the dead on Sunday. If he did that, that would have made it four days or four nights, something like that. Right. So – yeah, that doesn't fit in at all. That's something that was changed by either the Catholics or the pagans. One of them, they're responsible for that. But the Sabbath was never done away with. And it's pretty clear in Matthew 28 where it does talk about that. If they went by sunset to sunset, then it's pretty clear what day it was. Yeah. You know, um, it's been a while since I've looked at the, the early church writings on this topic and i didn't do it exhaustively either because you know they're they're like the the desert fathers they're more of the monastic type and everything more um mystic type with their writings but um the ones that i did read and, and studied um on the sabbath topic was 
it was almost I mean, we, we can't say unanimous, right? Because we don't have everybody's writings. We don't have all the positions that have all right. the church. But what we do have is that it was a very minority position. And there were certain groups like the Ebi, Eb, Ebonites or Ebionites that kept the Sabbath. And then there was um, uh, the Nazarenes, I believe, was another group that kept the Sabbath. And um, But among like the Ebionites, there were um, uh, odd, I'll say odd belief, beliefs within and there are multiple different Ebionite groups. There's some, they're, they were really odd. I'll, I'll say that. And, but the, but the main church fathers that we would call the early church fathers, um, almost none of them kept the Sabbath that I'm aware of, which is interesting because if the, if, um, you know, like, um, I don't think Clement, I recently read Clement of, um, Rome, I believe it is the earliest writing we have, and oh, it looks like Brandon left. Kevin, what's going on, man? I hope you're doing good. Hope you and uh, Chris as well, and Jamie. I hope all your you guys are doing well. Hope your families are well. The Lord is keeping you safe. Um, but yeah, it would be. I think it might be interesting to do a new a new study on the, on the church fathers and more in depth one than the last one I did on their position on the Sabbath and kind of where, where we can kind of pinpoint the Sabbath went awry or, or why they stopped observing the Sabbath or didn't want to observe the Sabbath. Yeah. Sorry about that. The dang thing bopped me out. I don't know what I hit, but <laughs> <laughs> Nah, you, you good. No, no worries, man. This is, like I said, this was just the last minute. I just put my son to bed, and I was like, you know, I have, it's been a while since I've done a stream. What do I, what do I want to talk about? And then the and, Sabbath just came in my head, so I said, okay. It's been a while since I've studied this or even talked about this topic, too. So. And hey, Kevin, I tried to type in the chat, but um, it didn't work out that well, so I'll probably do that later on. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Sabbath. Um I right now do not hold to the position that um, um, Christians need to observe a Sabbath as a, a, a law that is to be bound upon them to, to be observed every week, week, week in and week out. But if somebody wants to keep a Sabbath, I don't even have a problem communing with people on the Sabbath and going to worship on the Sabbath with brothers and sisters. I, it doesn't bug me at all. But I don't, I, in, until I'm convinced otherwise, I will probably not change my position on that. Um, and there, and I can walk through reasons why, um, if you're interested, if not, you can, you can talk about your position more if you'd like. Um, personally, the reason why I keep silent is because, you know, I have tons of questions and things like that in my past. I'm not going to get into all that. Um, but my past is pretty crappy and I keep worrying, like, you know, what if I'm slipping up here? That's the one thing I don't want to do. Right. And that's the one thing when I'm doing with this revision to the Geneva, it's like, I want to be 100%, um, biblically accurate going by the original, um, Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, because this is way too important to me. When I got saved, you know, I lost my home and Sorry. I didn't. Yeah, this is back in 2017. I haven't been back home for seven years, and I want to go home so bad. Yeah. But um, that's really where it hit me hard, and I've been trying to make sure I'm doing everything right. And when I heard about the Sabbath, now, mind you, I'm not SDA. I want nothing to do with that bull crap. Nothing. I know, and I knew even before I met you and Chris, because there was a video I came across. I'm like, what? So instead of following God, they're following a woman who should not even be a prophet or a prophetess. I don't give a rat's butt. I was like, no, nah, okay, we're done. But I started to observe the Sabbath a little bit. I've been trying to, but certain jobs I had were not doing that. And ever since I started observing the Sabbath, I felt a bit more better. Like, oh, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. And that's why I hold the position for the Sabbath because one, it's supposed to be a day of rest. You know, we hear about that in uh, which part? I think it was chapter two of Genesis. 
if I'm not mistaken. I don't know the verse, but I think it's in chapter 2, if I'm not mistaken. But for me, it just brings me peace. I can't really explain it, but it just gives me, gives me peace. Like it's something I'm supposed to do. Whoa, whoa. Oh, sorry. Whoa. My, my cat knocked down some of my stuff. <laughs> he wants to eat, so he's being obnoxious. <laughs> Give me one second. All right. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. So, yeah, Kevin, if you're on here, um, I do apologize. I tried to connect the chat. But, like, there's a thing on here. I'm going by mobile, and I can't exactly chat you until I connect it. So apparently but I when I did that it just bopped me off. So I do apologize for that. But um with that being the case, that's why I keep the Sabbath. So that. Right on, yeah. I I mean so whatever I'll say, I'm not I'm not gonna say to try to convince you not to keep Sabbath. If it if it's a blessing to you then uh keep on keeping it. Mm -hmm. I praise the Lord for that, no doubt. Um, so my issues with, from becoming an Advent or leaving Adventism, being taught in Adventism that the Sabbath is an eternal commandment. It was kept in heaven. It's kept now. It'll be kept in the future and in the eternal state. I don't see that being taught in scripture. Namely, when we go to Genesis chapter two, I don't see a, a Sabbath command as I do seeing a, a marriage or, or a union between man and woman command. It, that one is very clearly given. Whereas there is no Sabbath command or type of command that is clear, clearly given. It is interesting that it's interesting to, to make note of. But what we do what we do read here in um, <clears throat> Genesis chapter two, uh, starting at verse one. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So, and that so means that this blessing right here happens because all his work he had finished all his creative work, his, his creation of heaven and earth. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, there's the because again, because on it, God rested, there's the why, rested from all his work that he had done in creation. So the text tells you why it was blessed and made holy because God ceased from his creative work. The whole universe came into existence, into being, all the creatures, all the the humans, everything was created. Right. Um, and so from there, and this is, I have a, issues with lots of different beliefs, whether it's infant baptism, whether it's um, Sunday Sabbath. When we read too much into the text, we can draw a lot of things from the text that the text is not saying. I like to try to keep it as simple as possible and as straightforward as possible. Right. Um, a good example of that that we've all been familiar with re in recent times is the Daniel 8, 14, the 2300 years. When you read that into the text, you can have it say, well, it ends in 1844. There's investigative judgment. We are the remnant church, blah, blah, blah. So that's reading into the text stuff that's not there. So I personally don't like doing that with this text. I don't see a Sabbath command. If you do see one in anywhere in the scriptures, you're more than welcome to point that out to me if you'd like. Yeah, I got to make sure I have my Bible first. Oh. And I knew the, um, the Pharisees and Sadducees, they were pushing a lot of stuff. But if they were supposed to be, quote unquote, supposed to keep the law, they were doing about it the wrong way. That's what I said. Jesus had the right example for us all, and that's why he did that on purpose. That's why I like when he said that, Behold, I have not come to abolish the law or the prophets. I keep saying, Behold. So, pardon me, but he says, I have come to fulfill them. So, when they're doing fulfill, I'm not sure what that means for some people, but for me, it just means, like, um, you know, give an example, make sure you're going about it um, the right way. 
because like hey some of you don't know it or know what you're doing or something like that so i'll help you out basically uh need this if you want to share a screen or if you want me to go to a text I, can, the... I can i'm on mobile that's the thing i can't do it with mobile gotcha you want me to go somewhere in the text I'm um, sure. Let me pull some stuff real quick so I can do that. Uh, I don't care about your Google stuff. Get out of my face. Um, and I will say this again while you look that I do love my Christian brothers and sisters who do keep the Sabbath. Um, I have no issue, no problem. No, it doesn't bug me that that. Um, a Christian keeps the Sabbath, and like like you said with your with your story, it, it's a blessing to you. Then, Amen. Okay. I know Over. there are some there are some Christians that can. Well, you're just Judaizing, and you're a heretic for it, or something like that. And they they get too extreme with that kind of stuff. You know, sometimes I get kind of burnt out with this. Uh, everybody calling everybody a heretic and. It's like you okay. So there, there are certain groups, there are certain beliefs that are uh, anathema. Paul makes Paul makes that very clear. Uh, but once we get past that, and if we don't hold to any of those beliefs that are anathema, why can't we just kind of, you know, start being a little kinder to one another, more patient, kind of like what he says in Second Timothy two, um, patiently enduring when you're when you're dialoguing with one another correcting each other with mild mildness and so on but i don't know well i'm not finding anything where say they have to like require it but i think it's still required in my opinion but yeah, here cool. if we see in acts there's two acts but i want to make sure i'm reading them correctly we go to um acts chapter 17 verse 2 and I'll read this one. I got the ESV also, which I'm not a big fan of in a way, but it's still easy to read, at least. So I'll give him that. Yeah. And Paul went in, as was his custom, on and on three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from the scriptures. In another one, Acts chapter 16 verse 13. I probably should have gone there first, but it was just on top. So I'm just reading from the top. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to the riverside where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the woman who had come together. And I'm not going to read Matthew or Mark, but it still talks about the story of Jesus. We're talking about later on after his ascension. Uh, let's see, where are you? Where's Waldo? Here we go. <laughs> okay, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9. So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. So if I'm reading this correctly, it's saying right here, for those who are the people of God, which we get um, Jeremiah eleven four again, if you do all these things I command you to do, then you shall be my people and I will be your God. And we go to Hebrews 4, 9. It says, so there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. Of course, that's what I get from it. Someone else could probably get something else from it. But I'm just learning along the way. That's all I'm doing. Yeah. Now this one, uh, Hebrews 4, 9, is probably the... Uh, I would say probably one of the strongest texts in support of um, keeping Sabbath. Now, this is one that um, those who do believe that. So when, when it comes to the, the law, right there, mm -hmm. there's um, within the laws are within covenants. And Hebrews talks about the old covenant, which is the Decalogue, which is the sanctuary, which is the the book of the law so on and so forth that is all the one covenant it was made obsolete bringing in the new covenant and so there's debate about does does that mean because to kind of give a little background 
I don't know if you believe this way, but I was taught in the Adventist church that the Decalogue is the moral law. That's what um, Ellen G. White called it. And Ellen G. White also taught that um, on Judgment Day, uh, well, during the investigative judgment, you're judged based upon the works of the Decalogue. But when he returns, he will be holding the Decalogue, the tablets in his hands. In other words, saying this is the, st the standard you were judged by to receive eternal life or eternal death. And so that kind of brings in issues about, okay, so is, is the old covenant um, still binding on us? Because that's what the old covenant was, was the Decalogue. If that is, then, and if that is true, then yes, Sabbath keeping is insanely important because the Sabbath was the sign of the old covenant. So if you kept the Sabbath, it was the sign that you were keeping the old covenant. Now, what's interesting is, now I, I'm kind of curious what you make of this, that, that phrase, Sabbath rest. Have you looked at that in the Greek? Brandon, you there? Yeah, I'm still here. I'm look, look, oh, okay. looking at the up there. Oh, yeah. So uh, in, in the Greek, now where am I at? I lost it. It's what's called a, a hopox legomenon, meaning it's a one-time use of the word. Hmm. So um, that happens, uh, one we're kind of familiar with because of the, um, Chris and I talking about, book of Daniel and the SDAs in chapter nine of Daniel in verse 24, I believe it is. There's also hopox legomenon used and it's, it's the word called or translated as determined and SDAs take, they kind of, they say it should be translated as cut off instead of determined. That's the more proper way to translate it. Now, the issue with is, is when you have a word that's only used once in the scriptures, there's only one way to kind of figure out how that word is being used, and that's within its context. You can't really go out to any other sources within the scriptures to find that. Same thing with here. The word sabbatismas is a combination of two two words. The, um, uh, the Hebrew, which is the, I, th I believe it's the, um, oh man, I can't remember. It's, it's not sabbaton, it's... Um, Sab I can't. I can't remember. It's one of the four. The the I think it's the verbal form of Sabbath in the, from the Hebrew, and then the the ending is the S M O S is from the Greek, and it's kind of a combined word. And so um, a lot of people have said that it means a Sabbath keeping. Some people say a rest. So I, I was interested in, in what your thoughts were on that. Well, I'm re I'm reading through this stuff a little bit too. I do apologize. I found another one you might like. Also, and sorry if I'm not paying attention, but um, research more about the Sabbath as well. Revelation um, 14, 12. Here is a call for the endurance of the saints. I'm not saying every single person is a saint, you know. We all strive to be perfect, and we're not perfect, but we're hoping to get there. Here is a call for the endurance of the saints, those who keep the commandments of God. And their faith in Jesus. So when I get out of that one, it would be that now the old stuff was done away with, yes. But <clears throat> the way I'm thinking is like the old thinking, because we didn't have a full on understanding. But when Jesus came in, uh, that's when all this other stuff happened, and that's where we have the new covenant. We're like, okay, you know how this stuff worked then? This is how it's working now. So when I read out of this, is the commandments were never done away with. Because they were done away with, then there would be no law. They say, well, we're not under the law. If we're not under the law, that means you're basically saying, hey, you can go out and do uh, fornicating. You go out and do drugs and whatnot. And, they, and that's the problem we have in today's society. You know, on Sunday morning, you're a Christian, and then the next Six days you're drinking and all this other garbage. So if that means that, um, that no one's under the law or whatever, and the law's done away with, how does anyone explain that thing in Revelation fourteen twelve? 
Because right here it says, uh, endure, call for the endurance of the saints, those who kept the, those who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. Right. So you would say the commandments of God is is referring to the the um, Decalogue. I actually don't know because I never even heard the word Decalogue before. Take I was. Moment. Oh, well, in that case, um, there was a word I was gonna I was gonna say and it farted on my dang mind. That happens to me so much. <laughs> I was gonna say something. I literally was about to say something, then go. <laughs> <laughs> uh... But. For me, what I get out of it is part of the commandments, I guess. This is the way I could put it. There was literally a word, because right now I sound dumb. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, I'll compare with you. Wow. Soon, but... Yeah, um, so how I would take the commandments of God here is I do believe there were commandments given in the New Covenant. That, that Christians were are to keep, um, and that does include um, not murdering, not stealing, but it's not limited to those commandments. There are there are other ones where, so if you think about it, the the so sometimes some people will take the Decalogue and they'll split them into you know um, the first four are commandments you keep towards God, and the last six are one you keep towards man. And or it's love of God and love of man. I don't know if you hold to that or not. But what what those ones, especially for the ones that are love for man, are not really love for man so much as they are just a, a not doing anything to them that's really bad. Like, so for example, do not steal or do not commit adultery. I mean, we can all do it. We can all lock ourselves in, in, a, in a box and not do those kind of commandments. But there's no positive l loving towards them given in, in the Decalogue. Whereas in the New, in the new covenant, covenant, there is a positive uh, love towards your neighbor that we don't see in the Decalogue strictly. You know, people, you, you can go through the, the whole Torah and you can find those kind of commandments as well. But if we limit the commandments of God to just the Decalogue, then it's, I think it's limiting that phrase too much in my personal opinion. Because what I'm going through out here also, <laughs> dang bug, get on my face. <laughs> um, when we go to chapter five, is where he talks about. Uh, I'm not sure how many stuff he talks about mostly. I'm looking at it, but it's one specific one I wanted to give as an like, example. Like for you should not commit adultery. Matthew chapter 5, verse 31 says, It has been said also, whoever shall divorce his wife, let him give him give her him her winger. Give her a bill of divorcement. And this was during the time of Moses where the Pharisees asked Jesus, like, why then Moses commands to give a bill of divorcement? And he said, because of the hardness of your heart, Moses allowed, permitted you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. Because if they were in adultery, then they're supposed to do that. They give a bill of divorcement. But it continues down here. This is where he's giving some. This is where he's giving some examples. In thirty two, says, "But I say to you that whoever shall divorce or put away his wife, except for fornication, cause her to commit adultery. And whoever shall marry her who is divorced commits adultery." So right here we already see he's giving some examples and stuff like that. There's one I remember seeing. And I am not seeing it. But those are the ones the examples excuse me. Yeah. That I can um really find right now. Cause I'm actually going I flip this sucker around. 
Okay. I was like, I can't. I'm going based <laughs> off of this, actually. Okay, let me make my screen big. Uh, uh, let's see. How do I make it? I gotta get a physical copy. Hold on. I'm trying to figure out how I can make your screen bigger. Um, I actually don't know. I'm not. F yeah, I, I can't figure out. Anyway, I can't see it. Sorry, bud. You're good. I don't remember how to use uh, StreamYard that well. I forget how to make your screen the, the main. Oh, here we go. Oh, you got it? Oh, ha, ha, ha. I think I got it. Let's see. There's. Okay, that's me. No, we don't want to see me. We want to see you. But how do we do pick just you? I think you got. I think you had it for a second there. Uh, Look on my screen. Let's see. Click I on. I think no. you do. If I put my mouse over yours, it says remove, and oh, I don't want to do that. Let's see. Well, I'm pinning you. Oh, wait, there you go. You did it. Yeah, that's better. Oh, okay. This is actually until I get an actual copy because I don't have physical copy no more. Gotcha. Right on. Works pretty good for me, though. Yeah. I have to say, I am starting to get a little tired. I might end it soon. Um, yeah, I might have to do that, too, because I got to get up at 7.30 in the morning for busing. Like, no! Oh man, yeah, I am not a morning person. It is hard for me to wake up early in the morning. I have to every day. <laughs> oh, see, we got the same name. You're not a morning person, neither am I. See, there you go. You want to sleep in all day? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could sleep in. I could stay up late too, but then I can I can sleep in late if I if I could if I had no responsibilities. <laughs> never happened. So I want to get to that point because um I was on one show. Saying I want to devote my whole entire work for the Lord by like working from home. I literally blew three hundred dollars for a pack of laptops, ten laptops for three hundred dollars. I'm like, okay, because I want to start doing stuff, devoting more of my time for God. Because when I'm at when I'm at my job, I can't do that. It makes it harder on me. The environment makes it harder as well. I'm like, yeah, I gotta get out of here. It's time. Yeah. Yeah, I try to I try to listen to people's live streams while I work, but my my work is really loud, and and I don't have like uh, external speakers for my cell phone, and so I just put my phone in a cup, and it kind of makes it a little bit louder, but but it's not that much louder. So a lot of shows, especially, uh, um, well, I should say especially, but certain shows um, are the audio is quiet. I have a very hard time hearing that, and I miss a lot. So I actually don't have a lot of time to, to listen or, or study. And usually works. I work in the food in this industry. It, it, you get customers, they, they start coming and it's booming and you got to stay focused. Food industry. You work in a restaurant too? Uh, I run my own. Oh, my own okay. Yeah, it's, it's just me in there. And so it gets, uh, I've, I've contemplated putting like a little camera in there doing like a, a little sh YouTube show saying, you know, food cart life and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know if I will. We'll see. And I try to, what's hard too is I try to make uh, return customers. I try to create as many uh, personal friendships as I can with people that come in frequently or fre kind of frequently. Um, but when that happens, and, and it's happened quite a, quite a lot, a number of them will show up, and I'll, I'll talk to them while I'm cooking for orders, and it can get kind of hard at times, <laughs> kind of stressful. Yeah. But it, it's overall, it's good. It's good. But yeah, any uh, any last words you want to say on the Sabbath topic? I think I'll I'm going to end it here in a minute. I would say this. For people, you don't have to go based off my experiences or whatever. Ask God to help you out like I have because it really all depends on what your background is. It really does because mine's pretty bad. I've been trying to get right ever since. If you're in the same boat like I was, um, 
Just praying for guidance. If you're sorry for you did, pray forgiveness, stuff like that, because there's only one way to heaven. There is literally only one way. And this is something you don't want to mess up. I know we're not perfect. I'm not saying you have to be perfect. It's something we're striving to be. As long as you keep studying, keep putting your nose in God's word, read it every day, and don't stop. Because the moment you do, next thing you know, that's when the devil gets you. So whatever you do, keep fighting a good fight. And don't stop until your very last breath. No if, no ands, no buts, period. Because this is a spiritual war. This is why if anyone saw my videos, you would see why I'm angry. Because it hurts me. We should not be spitting in God's face. Because when we do stuff that we do today, we're spitting in his face. This is why, as biblical Christians, we need to stand up and walk we need to basically walk to walk and talk to talk just like Jesus did. That's pretty much all I can say about that. Amen. Awesome. Well, thanks for uh, chit-chatting with me a little bit on this topic, Brennan. I do appreciate that, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. All right, man. Take care. You too. Night, everybody. All right. So we will end. Let's see. How should I end this? I haven't even thought about that. We will end with a positive note on the Sabbath. Mark chapter 2, starting in verse 23. One Sabbath he was going through the grain fields. And as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. And the Pharisees were saying to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, "Have you never read what David did when he was in the need, when he was in need and was hungry, he and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God in the time of Abiathar the high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and also gave it to those who were with him. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man." not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. I want to thank everybody who listened to the show tonight, who uh, participated in the live chat. I appreciate you guys' time. Uh, it means a lot to me. I hope you guys have a good night. Grace and peace. God bless.